This has to be one of the most requested videos on the channel. And today we're starting the full journey. What's going on guys? My name's David Tomich. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And today I'm taking you through an entire Archicad course, 100% for free. So over the next few weeks, every single Monday, I'm gonna be dropping one part at a time, slowly diving in deeper and deeper into Archicad so that by the end of this course, you're going to be able to use Archicad like a complete expert. If you get lost at any point in time, there are a series of links down in the description below, including our 100% free Discord chat. You can join other professionals and students alike, simply trying to better themselves in the architecture profession. Now, enough of me. Let's get started with part one of this completely free Archicad course. Okay, welcome to your very first Archicad 26 tutorial and part one of this completely free course. Now, today I'm a little bit under the weather, so I apologize if my voice is a little bit nasally and a little bit sniffly, but we're gonna try and get through this in the best possible manner. So whilst you have Archicad 26 open, you will see the very basic view map and UI. First of all, you're gonna see a few markers in the middle and you're gonna see your generic outline of all of your toolbars and workspaces. Now, I wanna get you familiar with what you're seeing right here on the screen. So let's take a deep dive very quickly into the interface of Archicad 26. First of all, you're gonna have all of your elements up the top, including file edit view, all of the basics that you're most familiar with. You may or may not have CI tools and 4D library installed, these two are additional add-ons that I have personally purchased and added on to make our CAD a little bit better. We'll dive into all of these a little bit later. First of all, all you're gonna really want to do is tap on the window button, come down to toolbars, and make sure you have the same elements clicked as I do. So we want Australian drafting aids and we want standard. This will most likely say international drafting aids for you, not Australian. It just depends on what template you have open and available. Next, you wanna come across down to the palettes section and make sure you have these four selected. At the same time, we also wanna turn on renovations and trace reference. So I'll hit renovations, come back up to window, palettes, and also hit trace reference. You'll see that trace reference has landed in the middle of our screen. So what we want to do is click, drag, and drop that into the palette on the right hand side. Now we have our palette there and we have our renovation layers at the bottom. To continue familiarizing yourself on the left hand side, you're going to have this basic window and palette. You can drag it further and wider or you can simplify it by dragging it shorter. Personally, I like it in the double format, but you can have it however you like. So what we're gonna see on the left-hand side is most of our design and workflow tools. So we're gonna have our walls, our doors, our windows, our slabs, and our objects as well. So this is the main palette you're gonna be using most of the time. And if we click on one of these elements, you'll see that the top toolbar completely changes with all of the different elements available to you for that object. I'll hit escape to exit out of that menu so we can continue with the UI. Down below, you'll have the document section, which is a little bit more technical, and we'll get into that later. But mainly here, you have your grids, you have your text tools, your line tools, polylines, bubbles, clouds, and camera tools. So these are more for documenting as per the title, and they're not really used at the start until you get a little bit deeper into ArcCAD. We'll mainly focus on the design elements up the top. You're gonna have your windows up the top as well. So the more actual pages you open, the more tabs you're gonna have up the top. Archicad is not like Rhino, it is not like Revit. You can't have multiple windows side by side. So even though if I try to click and drag this 3D window, it's not gonna let me actually open two side by side. You can only have one open at a time. So on the right hand side, let's say I click on this elevation, you'll see it will open up another tab and we'll have the three tabs open in any one go. You can keep as many open here as you want. It doesn't really affect your performance too much, but if you have a large project, I do suggest keeping it pretty minimal and closing those elements as you work through. Now on the right hand side, we have basically our organizer and the best way to work through Archicad, all your layers, all your maps, all of your different viewpoints, including elevations and sections. Now, what you'll see is at the top, we have four different icons. We have our main organizer, which is our project map. We have our view map. We have our layout book. And finally, we have our publisher sets. All of these are quite technical and quite detailed. So first of all, your project map 
is going to show you everything and anything you could possibly have in your project. Whilst your view map, on the other hand, is going to be defined exactly how you like it and how you want it to be set out. So for instance, you'll see that there's different layers in the Australian template, including sketch design, the pages you would typically export for sketch design, the construction development documents, same sort of system, structural plans, ceiling plans, all of the pages you would typically have laid out. Now you can create new folders on this side, you can do whatever it is you want on this side by simply going down to the bottom and saving a viewpoint, cloning a folder or creating a new folder in its entirety. It really depends how you want this structured and set up, but for a beginner it does not matter too much because you're going to format it in the layout book. This is all going to be here just to kind of make your life a little bit more organized and a little bit easier. If you think about Photoshop, you can think about the layers. That's really what this is here. So speaking of layers, Archicad is a layering system. If you press Command or Control L, it will open up the model view layers. Just like Photoshop, you're going to have millions and millions of layers and you're going to be very careful when adding new projects to layers themselves. So as you can see, the template is quite detailed and it has everything pretty much broken down into every layer you could possibly need. Beams, exterior, general, interior, all very, very generic, but enough for you to be able to actually put the right things in the right layer. You'll see on the left hand side, we have all sorts of different layer combinations, which are basically attached to your view map. So if we close that, come back into our view map, open up any of these sketch plans, we can right click view settings on our site plan, and you'll say that layer combination is 100% planned site. So if I close that, Command L again, you'll see that if we were to double click on the site plan, it would only show us these layer combinations. Whereas if we change the sketch, it would show us a different layer combination. Now, this is critically important when you're changing pages and layouts. So when you go from a site plan to a floor plan to an elevation, you don't necessarily want to see all of that information. On site plans, typically you don't need to see the internal walls. On floor plans, you definitely do. So you want to make sure that each layer combination is perfectly set up for each section and each page. We can stick to the defaults here just because it makes life a hell of a lot easier. And when you get a bit more experienced, you can tweak this, play with it, update it, change it. So for instance, on the site plan, if we wanted to see the ceilings, we could press the little I button, turn on ceilings, and then hit the update button so that whenever we went back to the site plan, all ceilings were visible. But I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to click cancel and move out of that space. Now, focusing on this central UI in the middle, which is our main workspace and our main environment. If you zoom in a little bit using the mouse scroll wheel, you'll see we have two different markers here. First of all, we have E01 and we have S01. By default, E will stand for elevation, S will stand for section. If you're completely new to architecture, an elevation is the external of the wall. It shows your facade, your architectural treatments. It doesn't go too much into the construction details. Whereas a section will actually cut through a building and indicate what kind of construction methodology you're planning. So is it a slab on ground? Is it suspended timber? What kind of roof structure, etc. So both of these serve different purposes. Your elevation will talk about your materiality. This section will talk about your constructability. Down the bottom, we have our toolbar that gets changed very seldom. One of the main things you might change is this scale bar. So in your workspace here, in the model view, you will be working to a one-to-one -one scale, meaning if you measure one centimeter, it will be one centimeter. But if you export that page into a layout book, it will show it as a one to 100. If you want to change that, you just simply click on the change scale and change it to whatever scale you're looking for. Now, if we come into our view map across on the right hand side and drop down to the ground floor presentation plan, you will see some things change the style and color changes. That's not too important at the moment. What is important is let's say the scale is one to 200 and we wanted to make it one to 100. We drew everything, updated it, showed it exactly how we needed to and then double clicked off that page, came back to it and realized it was one to 200 still and all of our settings were messed up. We simply just need to drag it back to one to 100, zoom out a little bit so we can see everything in that page. Come across the settings here where you will see the little warning icon. This warning icon is telling you that the settings are not saved. And when you exit this page, it will revert back to default. If you don't want that to happen, simply click on the settings button, go, get current window settings, press OK, and it will revert everything to your current settings. So even if you simply zoom in 
it won't be saved to that viewpoint. If I go back to the first plan and the second plan, it will change it accordingly. The last thing you need to familiarize yourself with in the UI is the actual layout book. And this is where we export to a PDF and be able to actually present it to people. So if we come across the layout book, let's just go to A100 ground floor plan. You'll see that ArcCAD has a default layout set up ready for you to go and utilize as you see fit. We'll go through how to update this actual workbook and change the title block and everything in between in another part. But for today, I'm just simply going through the generic UI. So as you can see, by clicking on this little section here, it is showcasing the ground floor at one to 100 scale. If you right click and select update, it will update that and show whatever is available on the ground floor plan. We haven't drawn anything, so it's still blank and only showing our markers. Top right hand corner, we have our first introduction of our schedules, which is a little bit more of a technical and advanced feature. We may or may not get into that into this tutorial, but it is a very nice feature to have and something we can detail later on down the track. At the bottom, you'll also see this hashtag sign with project name. That is basically telling you that this is an automated feature, same as drawn by, same as project ID, and it will populate this information automatically based on information you provide. So to change that, file, info, project info, and you'll see we have all of these project info description boxes. If we go project name and title this free course, press OK, you'll see the project name completely changes. So if we come back, file, info, project name, we can continue to update all of this information one by one and it will populate to the relevant fields. Now, you don't have to populate all of it. You can only populate the items that are actually required to you. So for instance, if you only want to document what's in the title block, you can update your project number, status, client, climate zone, wind region, site, and it will populate all of those things down below. If we don't want that free course to be there again, simply delete it, press OK, it returns to project name. Now, that is the base introduction into ArcCAD 26, day one, part one, if you've never used this product before. There is so much that can be done with this program in such a short period of time. So for instance, I could quickly draw a shape, go into 3D, and my walls are already done. We'll begin modeling and talking about how to actually create a 3D architectural masterpiece in ArchiCAD in part two. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching part one of this ArchiCAD course. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and turn on the notification bell so you're informed of when part two comes out next week. But like I said, that is all for me, so I'll see you next Monday.